So welcome everyone. So good to see you again uh, for our final class of uh, Dr. Dror Bandi's uh, class, Abraham Joshua Heschel, Human Dignity is a Divine Concern. Dr. Bandi is dedicated to bringing Abraham Joshua Heschel's thoughts to Israel, translating his words into Hebrew and transforming Israel by his spirit. He holds a doctorate in Jewish thought from Bar Ilan University and is a popular lecturer in a variety of institutions, especially at Machon Kerem of the David Yelling College of Education. Dr. Bandi lives with his family in the community of the Urban Kibbutz Beit Israel in Jerusalem, a community of religious as well as non-religious Jews who unite together in social and spiritual activism. And now without further ado, I'll turn this to you, uh, Dr. Jaro Bandi. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I really uh, will appreciate if you can open your camera so we can feel uh, at least uh, some of connection. Um, uh, okay, mean, meanwhile, I, I will summarize our uh, course. Um, as you remember, we had six classes with five, this is the sixth. And in, in our classes, we met Eschel from a variety of perspectives. In our first class, we, we met him as a person. We met his uh, uh, biography, his uh, meeting, meetings with Martin Luther King, with Adolf Hitler, and his dream to, to bring Jewish philosophy in order to, to change the world, in order to make Tikkun Olam. In our um, second class, we read uh, Heschel's speech about religion and race, as, in which he spoke about racism as the very opposite of God. And in the third class, we saw another implication of his uh, philosophy, interreligious dialogue, pluralism. Uh, we, we try to understand his understanding of uh, human dignity from these two implications. Race, race, racism and interreligious dialogue. And in our first class, we saw uh, the way he um, understands the prophets, the ancient prophets of Israel as the sources of his uh, understanding of uh, human dignity. And in our last class, we saw his interpretation, interpretation to the rabbis to the thought of Hazal and how he learned from Rabbi Akiva um, his extreme understanding of the likeness of, of, a, of the like of man as created in as as as, a, as, the, as the creation of human being uh, in the likeness of God. Today we will summarize our uh, classes with uh, reading Heschel's parts of Heschel's article about the sacred image of man, about our very uh, topic. And let's let's start. I will I will share with you um, our text for today and. Uh, as my costume, I will be grateful if someone will uh, will help us with the reading. If someone wants to, to, to read our two first paragraphs. Okay. Thank you. Uh, man, man is the me measure of all things. It's pretty small on my phone. There we go. Man is the measure of all things. Uh, this net. Well, man is the measure of all things. This naturalist principle has been shattered more than ever in our own age by the question, what is the measure of man? 
postmodern man is more deeply perplexed about the nature of man than his ancestors. He is on the verge of spiritual insanity. He does not know who he is. Having lost sense of what he is, he fails to grasp the meaning of his fellow man. What is, what is human about a human being? What do I see when I see man? We know that man is more similar to an ape than an ape is to a toad. We are told that, quote, man has not only developed from the realm of animals, he was, is, and shall always remain an animal, unquote. But is this the whole truth about man? Is this an answer to the question, what do I see when I see a man? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. This is the opening of, of his article. Article, as you, as you can see, is very sharp. He, it, it was written in the 50s. The Holocaust is on his mind. And uh, he's very disappointed from the, what he saw in our Western civilization that all the day invest in, in, a, in a, the understanding of, of the human being by, by his uh, similarity to an ape, instead of sitting for a moment and looking at my fellow human being and ask myself, what do I see when I see a man? Or human being, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, this is this is the question of his of his of his of his own article about about the secret image of man. What what do I see when I see a man? Can I accept the saying that, that man is is a kind of animal? Can I accept um how can how can I understand how shall I understand my humanity, my being human, not only my human being? Yes, how what is the what is the secret of human dignity? Okay, let's let's continue. And uh, and it, can you continue perhaps? Perhaps, perhaps this is the central issue in religious education, to become aware of the sacred image of man. Man is our chief problem. His physical and mental reality is beyond dispute. His meaning, his spiritual relevance is a question that cries for an answer. There are three, is Thank that you. good enough? Yeah, okay. Yes, this is the challenge. This is the, right. the challenge of, of religious education to, to contribute something deep to the understanding of our humanity. The, the secret of, of human dignity will not come from, from science. The, ch the, the challenge of, of, of the religion of religion is to is to contribute something to the to the understanding of, of humanity that uh, that science, that, science, that the science can't, can't give us. Yes, it's not only our physical and mental reality. The question is the question of meaning. What, what is our meaning? What is my meaning? What is the meaning of being human? And let, let's continue several, uh, several paragraphs. Me again? Yeah, thank you, Anna. Do you? Okay. You, I, I, okay. Now, because other people might want to read too. <laughs> okay. There are three aspects of human existence which seem to be basic to the Bible. One, man is created in the image of God. Two, man is dust. Three, man is an object of divine concern. Nothing is more alien to the spirit of Judaism than the veneration of images and symbols. The third commandment, you shall not make yourself a graven image implies the rejection not only of images fashioned by man, but also of, quote, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, unquote. It would even 
be alien to the spirit of the Bible to assert that the world is a symbol of God. Hmm. Please continue is, another paragraph. Yes. And yet there is something in the world that the Bible does not regard as a symbol of God. Does it is God. not. The Bible it. does regard. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I put my own mind in here. It is not a temple nor a tree. It is not a statue nor a star. The one symbol of God is man, every man. God himself created man in his image, or to use the biblical terms, in his selim and demut. How significant is the fact that the term selim, which is frequently used in a damnatory sense for man-made image of God, as well as the term demut, of which Isaiah claims in 4018, no demut can be applied to God, are employed in denoting man as an image and likeness of God. Thank hmm. you. Thank you. This is the, our first step in Heschel's understanding of human dignity um, by, uh, as, as it stems from, from the Bible. As from the very opening of the Bible, uh, the saying that human beings, that, that we were created in the image of God. And Heschel point, points here that the, the, the word Selem is a word that the Bible doesn't like, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if, as you, Maybe you know that Maimonides, in his very first chapter of the Guide of, Guide of Perplex, um, can't accept that there is any another interpretation to Tselem, to the word Tselem. The only legitimate interpretation of this word is essence. And he tried to, to explain that, that uh, the meaning of the words of the term Selem Elohim, the image of God, is the essence of, of human being, our ability to think. But, but Heschel, Heschel doesn't accept it. He says, no, no. We know, we, we know the, the word Selem from the Bible. The Bible uh, yes, doesn't like Slamim. Slamim is icons. Mm -hmm. The Bible forbi forbids God. God forbids the, to to make any icons of God. But the the story about the creation of human being as as uh, yes, as, as someone who was created in the image of God tried tried to say no. All the there is no likeness of God except one, the human beings. Yes, I, I, I believe that you understand that he, when he say, when Heschel wrote man, he intended to, to speak about man and woman, woman in the same time. Mankind. Yeah. Yeah. This is the <laughs> kind of writing, of writing in the 50s. And, and, uh, and uh, as you know, the first Adam, was created, as, as the Bible said, was created in the image of God, Zachar Bo Nekeva. Both uh, men and women were, create, were created in, in the image of God. And, and this is the only uh, kind of speaking of the 50s um, and in, which, in which I shall speak about men, but he intend, intended to speak about uh, right. uh, all human beings. And this is very sharp saying, yes, Selem Elohim is not only our ability to think. Selem Elohim is that in humanity, there is a similarity to God. There is, yes, uh, Maimonides, when Maimonides speak about Selem Elohim as the ability to think, he only says that that Selem Elohim is, is the essence of human being, of the of the human being, but but mm -hmm. Heschel, but Heschel say no, no. There is a someone. There is a there is a something that we share with God. It's much more sharp than the, our ability to 
to to to think and 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 yes there is is tenem of god every human being every human being here you can you can see why why Heschel uh, uh, thinks that that god is the very opposite of racism yes every human being was created in the image of god this is the very first message of the bible the universalist message of of the universal god and every human being uh, has every human being share something with god what we are share with what 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 can we share with god what we have in our human dignity that we share with god let's continue okay or, or do you have any questions about not what yet. not yet thank you so let's let's continue oops let's see where are we just moment just moment we we should go to the second uh, second uh, part of the page here not the bible if you can okay. see it can mm -hmm. you see it thank yeah you. shall i just go on yeah, sure. um, thank you not that the Bible was unaware of man's frailty and wickedness. With supreme frankness, the failures and shortcomings of kings and prophets of men such as Moses and David are recorded. And yet Jewish tradition insisted that not only man's soul, but also his body is symbolic of God. This is why even the body of a criminal condemned to death must be treated with reverence, according to the book of Deuteronomy 21-23. He who sheds the blood of a human being, quote, it is accounted to him as though he diminished or destroyed the divine image, unquote. Hillel characterized the body as an icon of God, as it were, and considered keeping clean one's own body as an act of reverence for its creator. As not it's one okay. man, oh, continue. As yes. not one one man or one particular nation, but all men and all nations are endowed with the likeness of God. There is no danger of ever worshiping man, because only that which is extraordinary and different may become an object of worship. But the divine likeness is something all men share. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's interesting. So in this in this uh, three paragraphs we can see how Heschel uses the sources that we that we met in our previous classes if you were yes he 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 had a huge research about as, as we saw in our previous classes about the bible and about uh, the rabbis and the here, here he, he quoted only several uh, examples. What, but we, but this is part of a of a whole, in which I shall try to try to point it about several uh, implications of the of the saying that human being that that we were created in the image of God. First of all, he say this is not only our ability to to think. This is also our body, and there is no link between our uh, moral uh, behavior and our choices. The our 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 similarity the, the similarity between human beings and God is, is about the very, the very existence of, of, of the human being. It's not, we, we are not, uh, it's not about our ability to think, it's not about our moral uh, behavior, it's even about our body. Every human being uh, has has something in which he share with God in his body. Yes, it's 
very sharp saying and you know there, there are moral questions about uh, about uh, about the Maimonides explanation of Tzelem uh, Elohim as our ability to think because not not only not all the human beings have the same ability ability to think unfortunately um. there are people uh, who who has who have no who have problems in their life their abilities there are people with disabilities the uh, cognitive dis disabilities uh, can we say that they have no Tzelem Elohim? I shall say no. Every human being is not about this is not about our ability to think. This is even now about our our moral behavior. It's in our very body. This is why you can't you can't yes uh, even the body of criminal con criminal who condemned to death must be treated with reverence. Yes, the, the Torah says that you can't leave him on the tree uh, after you you hang it, you hang him because he has Tzelem Elohim, and this is not this is not uh, respectful to God that someone uh, who is very who has likeness to him in his body. Yes, this is the body on the tree. Uh, uh, you, you you have to you have to take it to, to take him down from the tree. This is uh, not respectful for God because the body of human being was created in the image of God, and this is why, as as Heschel, uh, as as we as we saw in our previous class, that Hillel, the old, the elder, say that he takes shower because his body was created in the icon as the icon of god we, we saw these sources and this is why this is not about one nation yes hmm. every nation every human being has the likeness of god it's about the individual individual and uh, you can't you can't uh, behave like a racist because you are the chosen people. No, no. Heschel can't accept it and say it's not about even our being part of the, the people of Israel. Selem Elohim is something much more deeper and every human being uh, share, share something with, with God. Um, let's go. Yes, Judy, you want to say something? Yes. When I got to the line of there's no. I don't. I don't. I don't hear you. Can you hear me? Please, please. Uh, your mic is uh, is not working. Judy, not um, working. you're unmuted, but maybe maybe just try to get closer and speak a little louder. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah it's you. a little better now. Okay. Um, now I've lost the text. However, I don't know why. I, I, I will share it again in just a moment. Um, uh, here. Yes. Okay. So uh, where you have to click to go back to the uh, full screen uh, screen mode uh, that, uh, door. Okay. What? Yes. Yeah. That's Perfect. Fine. Thank you. It says that there is. Uh, I, I have two questions. Uh, it's it struck me when you said that obviously could not be the function of thinking because not everyone has the same capacity uh, and you couldn't say that therefore he didn't have telemelkim but the body also is subject to variation um, and defects and um, handicaps and in what way does that reflect on telemelkim and then the other question I had was um, where he says that there's no danger of ever worshiping man. I understand conceptually because we're all equal, we should not worship a man, but 
the worship of individuals has been part of our history as people follow cult-like individuals and raise them to uh, mystic levels. Yes. yes I, I, I want to start from the first question. And thank you. Uh, um, indeed, uh, you know that the Torah says that you, you shouldn't, how do you say, it, to, to, to made make a picture on your hand uh, what is the word the english word for for a ktovet kaaka yes you shouldn't your your body is holy you can't you shouldn't oh uh, tattoo yes tattoo thank tattoo. You. you 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 shouldn't um you, you should behave your body as a holy and you you, you shouldn't uh, shouldn't uh, hurt yourself and and um well, this is this is a good question, but but uh, yes, it's we are not has the same body as God. Yes, uh, our hand is not just like God's hand, but but it's about our very existence. How our very existence share, shares something with God. Yes, it's, it is not. Uh, you know that, uh, as I said, as I said before, uh, man and woman, both of them were created in the in the image of God, which means that this is God is no uh, body of man or, or a body of woman. Yes, it's it's much more complicated, and and the saying is our very existence. There is holiness of life yes it is not about our ability to, to think it is not about our uh, moral behavior it's about our very life which our body is a part of, of our very life this is my answer to the question and and the second question and i think that heschel hinted here to uh, the iconization of the king that you can find in in uh, ancient 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 nations ancient tribes who saw you know the oh the king of egypt as the only one who was created in the image of the sun who was mm. created in the image of the nail yes and this is why we have to worship him. When, when, uh, when God is the sun, when God is the nail, yes, uh, there is a danger that we will worship the man who is, who is uh, the symbol of Egypt. Yes, Pharaoh, uh, the king of Egypt. But when every human being was created of the image of the universal God. So no one is, is unique in, in this likeness. This, I think that this is what he tried to say here. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as, as you say, as you, as you mentioned us, our Jewish history uh, has a problematic uh, tradition in, in, in this way. Hetchel himself, Hetchel himself as we saw in our first class, uh, was selected to be the next rabbi only because his, his father was a rabbi. Yes, he came from Hasidic dynasty, but but he he chose he chose another way, and he uh, didn't continue to be the next rabbi, and. Uh, you know, he, he has in his in his book about the Kotzker rabbi, he explained why the Kotzker rabbi locked himself in his last 20 years in a chamber and uh, in his room and, and and didn't get out. Why? I shall explain, ex explain in his book uh, about the Kotzker that the Kotzker can't accept 
that his Hasidics, that his uh, dis disciples, and uh, admired him as if he is, he is a god, so he locked himself in a room, so he, they will not worship him. So mm. Heschel uh, maybe, maybe hinted here that when in our history we found a worship, uh, a worship of human being, this is a kind of idolatry. Mm. Anyone else would want to, to ask, to say? I just, could I say one thing? I thought the on the point yeah. of thinking yeah. is different from having a body, uh, or is there a difference? The truth, it, it looks to me, maybe it is that thinking requires extra effort, but basically a body's a body, whether it is a a uh, stillborn child or, a, or an Einstein or some of us in between, um, it still has Selamelo came without doing a thing. It's not, is that true? Is that what he means? Yes, yes. It, this is not our, about our... our right. Uh, so uh, thinking is what we can personally do and that varies, but we all have a body. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Brian, you want to, to say yeah, thank you. Um, I did have one question. So how did he reconcile the idea of chosenness with his understanding that mm. all people? Good question. I, what, I, I can't, I can't hear the, your last oh, okay. word. So how um, did he reconcile the, uh, the concept of chosenness with the uh, idea that all nations are equal? This is not... Hmm our the, the topic of our class but i will say no, for, words for, about for, it for heschel. yes uh, heschel explained that the the narrative of the bible is not a conceptual saying about the chosen people but about relationship between two persons, between, you know, the, the lecha dodi likrat kala. The Bible is not, is not saying that we are, uh, maybe I, I can explain it, but by, 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 by an example, uh, we, we, we say that we choose to buy this object and we say that we choose to live with this person. In, in both of the of the saying, I use the word to, to choose, but but the meaning is very different. When I say I choose to buy this object, I say that this is the object that it, it answer my my questions, my needs. Yes, and this is when when we understand the, the saying God choose the uh, choose the, the Jewish people as buying an object, we, we are going to the, the realm of racism as, as if uh, we are the, the, the holy object of God. But when we understand the, the story about the chosen as, as, a, as a choose of, of someone to live with, with as a marriage, or as a, or, as, or, or as if God is our uh, uh, parent, this is relationship, and the, the, the choice to live in relationship doesn't say that our that my wife is the best is the best in the object in the world. No. It only say that something happened between us, that we love each other, oh. that we we transcend ourselves to the other. So the, the, the when God chose chose the Jewish people and the Jewish people respond to to this and chose God back, and the only meaning of this is there is a covenant between us that we have to work for tikkun olam 
that, that our very eth that, that the very ethos of our people is the obligation to the universal God, and there, there is no any saying about uh, as, as if we are better than any, anyone else. It's a relationship, and Heschel pointed to Isaiah chapter 19. You can look after the class. The last, the last, um, the last psukim, the last uh, uh, lines of Isaiah 19 is that when the Mashiach will come, Egypt will also be a chosen people. Yes, and and uh, Heschel shall say that the chosen people is not a fact. This is a way of living. And every nation nice. can live in such a way of living. Nice. Um, so this is not our topic, what? But uh, my answer, my short answer to your question. Thank Beautiful. you. So um, let's continue. Um, okay. Um, yeah. If you, I don't have the text. I, I, I will. I will share. I will share again. And. Uh, Let's continue. We, we are in, we are in, in we, we have no, we, 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 the world. Heschel still doesn't say what is the meaning of, of this share. What we share with God? What is this, this uh, share? So let's continue. Where are we at? This is a conception or? Yes. This is a conception of far-reaching importance to biblical piety. What it implies can hardly be summarized. Reverence for God is shown in our reverence for man. The fear you must feel of offending or hurting a human being must be as ultimate as your fear of God. An act of violence is an act of desecration. To be arrogant toward man is to be blasphemous toward God. He who oppresses the poor blasphemes his maker. He who is gracious to the needy honors him, Proverb 14, 31. And what is more, biblical piety may be expressed in the form of a supreme imperative. Treat yourself as a symbol of God. In the light of this imperative, we can understand the meaning of that astounding commandment, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy, Leviticus 19, 2. Thank you. Just a moment. I will, I will skip to the next, uh, okay. to the next page. Yes, please continue. Uh, the idea of God as the no, father no. of men. Oh. No, no, no. In, in the, in the left, left uh, oh. <laughs> of the page. What? Are you, uh, dust thou art? Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes. Dust thou art and unto dust thou shalt return, Genesis 3.19. These words with which the Lord addressed Adam after he sinned conveyed a basic, convey a basic part of the biblical understanding of man. The fact of man having been created in the image and likeness of God is mentioned as a divine secret and uttered in a divine monologue, while the fact of man being dust is conveyed to man in a dialogue with man. Nowhere... In the Bible, does man standing before God say, I am thy image and likeness. Abraham pleading with God to save the city of Sodom knows, behold now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord who am but dust and ashes, Genesis 18, 27. Job prays, remember, I beseech thee that thou hast fashioned me as clay, 10, 9. And his last words are, I abhor my words and repent, seeing I am dust and ashes, 42, 6, C thirty nineteen. In this spirit, the psalmist describes men as beings, quote, that go down to the dust, unquote, Psalm twenty two thirty. This miserable fact, however, is also a comfort to him who discovers his failures, his spiritual feebleness. The psalmist is consoled in the knowledge that God understands our nature he remembers that uh, it understands that he remembers that we are dust psalms 103 14 man then is involved in a polarity of a divine image and worthless dust 
He is a duality of mysterious grandeur and pompous aridity, a vision of God and a mountain of dust. It is because of his being dust that his iniquities may be forgiven, and it is because of his being an image that his righteousness is expected. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Will we be able to get a copy of this after the class is over? Uh, Will you post it yeah. in sources? There will be uh, there will be a, a copy of this on the website under uh, live. So I will uh, share the link at the end. Thank you. Perfect. So so why there is there are times that we feel like a dust, and like and why there are times that we feel like the image of God? What is the source of of our feeling as a dust? in the wind and what, what is what is the source of our feeling as, as created in the image of God the most important line is here yes and uh, yes in the image and likeness of God is mentioned as a divine secret and uttered in a divine monologue well the fact of man being dust is conveyed to man in a dialogue with man. Yes, we, no one in the Bible come to God and say, I am your image. No, when we stand before God, we feel like a dust. Maybe also when we, say, when we stand without God, we feel like a dust. So what is, what is the source of our feeling the image of God, or what is the source of when we see another human being that we see him or her as, as someone who is created in the image of God. The secret is the way that God is looking on the human being. This is the contribution of, this is the, the one of mm. the most important meaning of God. When we stand before God, and we see how he, how the life of, of the other is, is holy for God. So uh, in, in these times, in these times, we can feel the image of God. The source of the image of God is not the essence of human being, is not our ability to see, no, this is only a dust, our, our, our the feeling of being created in the image of God is is God's it's God's perspective on human being. Mm. When we, as much as we close to God, we have reverence to other human beings. We should have reverence to other human beings. And if and if we are praying to a God and feel racism the meaning is it this uh, that our god is only an idol yes mm. and then if our god is is a white so so we we have no care for for non for, for non white people this is idolatry but if god is the, the source of of the Tzelem Elohim in, in every human being that is so as much as you close to God, you have to feel equality. And this, this is why in the famous Pasuk, the Avta Lerecha Kamocha, love the neighbor, uh, your, ne your neighbor as yourself, the very next words are Ani Hashem, I, I am mm. the Lord. Because there, this is two sides of a one coin in, in Heschel perspective. And, and let's continue and, and, and see why this, why this lead to, to the understanding of, of the share. Between. Where will we read? The yeah. idea of God. The idea of God as the father of man expresses not merely man's creaturely dependence on God, or his personal affinity to God. 
It expresses the idea that man's ultimate confrontation is not with the world, but with God, not only with a divine law, but with a divine concern, not only with his wisdom and power, but also with his love and care. Man, yeah, man is man because something divine is at stake in his existence. He is not an innocent bystander in the cosmic drama. There is in us more kinship with the divine than we are able to believe. The souls of men are candles of the Lord lit on the cosmic way rather than fireworks produced by the combustion of nature's explosive compositions. And every soul is indispensable to him. Man is needed. He is a need of God. Please continue. Life is a partnership of God and man. God is not detached from or indifferent to our joys, joys and griefs. Authentic vital needs of man's body and soul are a divine concern. This is why human life is holy. God is a partner and a partisan in man's struggle for justice, peace, and holiness. And it is because of his being in need of man that he entered a covenant with him for all time, a mutual bond embracing God and man, a relationship to which God, not only man, is committed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here we, we are in the, in the core of Heschel's understanding of human dignity. There is a partnership between God and human being. In this sense, human being is in need of God, not need in the, in the meaning of, uh, of, of as an object of God, but need in the meaning of, of mutual, mutual relationship as, as someone needs his, 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 uh, his uh, wife, his husband, his, is a close friend, and and this is the deep the deep meaning of need, not not uh, yes. unfortunately there are times that we fail and and use each other. No, not need in this in this meaning, but need in, in the need in the sense that you can't love without someone else love is is uh, an event that uh, occur uh, as a between between two two persons so we need each other in order to to love each other so we we can't be lover alone so in this sense god needs needs uh, human beings and in this sense, we share something with God. We share the love. We share the concern. The human dignity, the Tselem Elohim, is not the ability to think, it's the ability to, to transcend ourselves to the other, to love the other, to care about other, to feel reverence to the human being, in this in the very time that we that we have reverence uh, to god this is the share yes we we have something in us that it, that it is very similar to god the ability to to transcend ourselves to the other this is the gift of god to 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 us he transcends the self and create another person he transcends himself and and and, and have a covenant with another uh, human being 
And we also uh, have to, to feel a, a deep obligation to every human being, a deep concern about every human being. Yes, this is the this is Heschel's explanation about human being. What do you say? Any saying, any question? What do you say? A, I just had a thought as you were saying that, that Adam is lonely and needs a partner and, and, and goes through the search of the whole animal kingdom till he finally, God has to create a partner for him. And in some parallel way, maybe God's creation of humanity is, is parallel to God's creation of Chava for Adam. Yes, as, as, the, as the Gemara says, as the Talmud says, when there is a love between couple, uh, the Shechina is between them. Yes, the, the God's presence is between them. And we, as we, as we, as we say, Baruch after uh, under the Chupa, yes, uh, this is the meaning of, of, of the likeness of God, our, our ability to love each other, to make love, to be in love, and, and, this is not about our ability to think. No, it's about our ability to, to transcend ourselves in love. And uh, yes, there is a... And you, you know, the Gemara always also said, the Talmud also said that when, when we divorced from each other, the Mizbeach is crying. Yes, uh, Mizbeach in the... In, in, in the temple, yes, well, how do you say Mizbeach in English? I don't know the word. The, the, I want to translate Mizbeach. Who is altar. crying? Altar. altar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank altar. you. This is the word. Yes, the altar is crying in, in a, when someone divorces. As so, so, yes. Yes. The, the place in which God dwells is love, is concern from for each other is in our uh, being parents, in our, in our being uh, uh, sons and, and, and daughters and brothers and sisters and and in our social social fight for, for for justice for everybody. God is the, the place of God is the Kuna. Let's let's read the last the last. Uh, the last lines. This is not uh, easy lines to read. Uh, Judy, want to, to do you want to continue after having after having eaten the forbidden fruit, the Lord sent forth man from paradise to till the ground from which he was taken. But man, who is more subtle than any other creature that God has made, what did he do? He undertook to build a paradise by his own might and is driving out God from his paradise. Uh, his meaning man's, lowercase h. For generations, all looked well. He undertook to build a paradise by his own might and is driving out God from his paradise. For generations all looked well, but now we have discovered that our paradise is built upon the top of a volcano. The paradise we have built may turn out to be a vast camp for the extermination of man. This is very hard to, you know, this is very hard to read in today's, yes. <laughs> what we're living through. This yes. is a time to cry out. One is ashamed to be human. One is embarrassed to be called religious in the face of religion's failure to keep alive the image of God in the face of man. We see the writing on the wall, but are too illiterate to understand what it says. 
There are no easy solutions to grave problems. All we can honestly preach is a theology of dismay. We have imprisoned God in our temples and slogans, and now the word of God is dying on our lips. We have ceased to be symbols. What saved the prophets from despair was their messianic vision and the idea of man's capacity for repentance. That vision and that idea affected their understanding of history. History is not a blind alley and guilt not an abyss. There is always a way that leads out of guilt, repentance or turning to God. The prophet is a person who living in dismay has the power to transcend his dismay. Over all the darkness of experience hovers the vision of a different day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's a very, uh, I have no words to, 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 to describe it. In Heschel felt the, the failure of the Holocaust, but in the same time he believed that God can come and change our lives, that we can fight against racism. And then Martin Luther King came and changed America. It was a miracle that in the same generation, you, you, you saw such a, a unbelievable racism and such an unbelievable revolution. And Martin Luther King make this revolution by the name of God. This is for Heschel, the source of our hope. Not the religious institutions who, who fail to understand the image of God, but the very standing of, of every one of us before God and the, the experience of feeling God in the equality, equality between us, in the love between us, in our responsibility to each other. So in one hand, we feel as a dust, we feel the failure of, of modern times, of modern times as we built, we built a paradise and, and, and told God to find another place. But in the same time, we have a hope because, because we see the anticipation of God from human beings, the love of God for human beings. And this is the source and hope of tshuva uh, of, of, of uh, the Western civilization to uh, Tikkun Olam. Thank you so much to, to everyone. And, and I hope to, to meet you one day in the middle of New York City, you, you will catch me and say, ah, oh, we, we learn with you in Grisha. And I will tell you, please, please put a, a, <laughs> a setting, a, a black setting around you so I will recognize you like the Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Please, please forward the message of Heschel. You can read it in English. He lived in, in New York City. Uh, these messages are so important, I believe, to Judaism today and to every human being. And I, it, it, still, it is my privilege to, to bring his words to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dvar, for such so a wonderful, much. wonderful series. Thank was, you so much. Thank you so much. Not only a learning experience, but a growing experience. Thank you. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Thank you. We all loved it.